All right. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of A Comedy Advice Podcast. My name is Stefan, and I'm your host. Joining me today is a very special guest and a little bit out of the box of A Comedy Advice Podcast. She's a top 20 Billboard charting artist. Everybody, please welcome Shim Shia. Hello. Thank you so much for having me. Did I give it enough pizzazz? Maybe I gave it too much. Did I go in too hot? Too much pizzazz? No such thing. Are you kidding? I sing pop music. <laughs> oh my gosh. Shimshia, aka Lauren, I'm very excited to have you here on a comedy advice podcast. Now, as you know, there's some comedy, there's some advice. I was going to ask, are you usually a good advice giver? Do you give good advice to your friends? I give advice without them asking for it. Does that count? Okay, that's very on brand with this podcast. That's excellent. Okay, Perfect. good. Me too. Before we dive into the self-help though, I wanted to ask a little bit about you. You've got a great background. I was reading a little bit, hearing your music, and I wanted to talk about your new album, Anywhere But Here. But first, I wanted to go way back, well, as far as an hour will take us, but then to your origins in Buffalo, New York, starting mm -hmm. off as a classical pianist. How did your love, what, where was the spark that caused your love for music to just burst into flames? I just, I think it just grew. Like I played piano since I was like maybe three or four. And I, I just always liked it. I've always found a really big escape for me. I think like lots of people, it's, it's a place where you can go and it's just you and the piano and no one else around. No one else knows what you're doing, what you're thinking about, what you're feeling. And also a way to kind of ch channel those emotions into my music. That's awesome. And I just wanted to pause really quickly. You said three or four starting the piano. I think three or four, I was probably still in diapers. Could barely say mom and dad. So that is uh, very precocious of you to be starting to play music at that age. That is awesome. That's my mom. She's the overachiever. I always thought it was four. And then recently she was like, no, you started when you were three. And I was like, I think you're lying now. I think it's my mom's exaggeration, to be honest with you. <laughs> That's hilarious. And I know that you played, you started singing and songwriting with your two sisters, but to your mom, did she kind of, um, did she plant that seed of music inside all of you because she was also a singer, songwriter, pianist or? No, the opposite. No. My mom's an educator. And I think because of that, she knew how much all the other extracurriculars and things were important for brain development. I mean, to be 100% honest with you, she did this so that I would be smart. She like, because music and math are really correlated and she always wanted to be good, me to be good at math. And so I think that's why she put me in piano at four years old. Oh, that's, that's really interesting. My yeah. mom is also an educator. She taught math, but then she, I got into guitar when I was like sixth grade. So oh, no, sweet. eighth, eighth grade, eighth grade. You're turning but, into my mom. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. I got into guitar when I was two years old. Oh my God. <laughs> no, I was in the womb, just strumming on the ukulele. Oh God. Well, that's awesome. And so you started singing and doing songwriting with your two sisters, hitting the mm -hmm. open mics, and then it took off from there. How did you, did you leave Buffalo? And then I think you went to the university in Montreal. For I did. It's, it's been a windy road because for okay. a while I didn't understand exactly how I was going to fit in as a classical pianist. I didn't, as much as I love classical piano, that's not my total world. Like there's so much of it that I love, but a lot of it doesn't necessarily resonate. And I didn't know how I was going to make money. So I ended up quitting piano school and just got a general degree and just meandered, went back to playing in bands, just did different things in music until I finally moved out to LA and was like, wait, let me give the solo thing a try. I had never done the solo thing or even sang really as a lead singer in my bands. I was always backup or, you know, alternative or something like that. Oh, Thanks. interesting. Yeah. That's really, that's really cool. And it is something that hits me too because i after guitar i was in a band i was not very good at any of this but i played guitar and sang in a band in high school and then i tried to go to college for classical guitar oh and really that was not my cup of tea at all it was just so different and i just started thinking okay i'm doing like eight hours a day growing out my fingernails and uh it, it just 
it wasn't the music that I wanted to play and it wasn't what I wanted to spend my time doing. And then also I was like, oh, how am I going to make money? So I ended up pursuing another degree in Italian, which is a very lucrative degree, but that's totally. another story for another Great time. Great career choices all around. It's <laughs> yeah, the life exactly. of an artist. I mean, that's just what it's, it is. To be an artist, you can't figure out where you fit in like anywhere. So. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. And I, I wanted to talk, I know that you had gone once to LA being um, more of a single artist, but you were in a band and I was reading your interview in Voyage LA and you were saying that breakups in a band, which you were in some bands, some bands, one band? No, multiple bands, yeah. Multiple, multiple bands. Oh man, so multiple heartbreaks. Because you were saying that breaking up in a band is almost like breaking up in a relationship, which I agree. I, I still remember it was like 20 years ago almost, but I broke up with, the, with my guys, my bros in our band, and I still remember it. But um, I was going to ask, what was it like being in the band, kind of working with others to be able to create music and then saying, hey, it's time to, to stop? I think it was, it was really great when I wasn't quite as serious. Like when I didn't think that quote unquote, making it was possible or something that I was really trying for when I was kind of just playing a little bit below that, because then it's fine. You know, your drummer wants you to change the song a little bit. You're like, cool, let's do it. Your lead singer's like, oh, I'm, I'm going to write a ballad this time, even though you're like a rock band. And you're like, that's great. Let's, let's do a ballad. You know what I mean? Like you just <laughs> seven, eight time signatures all over the place because it, it, it doesn't matter. And nice. I know, especially with one of the bands, like when we went we got a cool opportunity and something that I think could have really leveled us up. And it was mm -hmm. amazing because you saw where people went. Some people were all on board and then others were scared. And who knows if whether that was a good opportunity or not, like looking back with no idea, but right. it just kind of showed, okay, well, how are we going to, how are we going to make something of this if we're not all on the same page about what we want to create with it? 100%. 100%. So did you guys break up over text or did you just leave? Did you ghost them? No, I definitely, I, this one was a phone call and it was okay. definitely a phone call where I said, it was one of those, have you ever done this thing where, you know, the other person's going to be mad or upset about whatever. And so you just keep repeating the same thing over and over again. I just <laughs> kept repeating. This isn't working for me. This isn't working for me. Well, but you're really making a big state. It's not working for me well, you're really not thinking straight and you're really crazy if you think this, well, this isn't working for me. And that's all I did for an hour. I repeated, this isn't working for me over and over and over again. It was intense. That, that is a good time. Did you have to practice beforehand? Cause I re I've had those conversations and I do walk in circles in this room actually. And I'm like, this isn't working for me. This isn't working for me. My wife gets very scared, but I just tell her it's practice and uh, it's all worthwhile. But <laughs> yeah, you got you got to rev up for those things. You have to be really solid, right? Like if you don't know what you want to say, it's tough. They yes, because those continued continued um, excuses. I don't know what to call them. Those defenses, retaliations. They can break you to your core. So you got to have that solid defense mantra to be able to just be like, "Look, it's over. It is over." Yeah. So. Congratulations. It's like Johnny Cochran. I don't know who, which one is Johnny Cochran. Someone is. So yeah, there you go. Exactly. So you made the right choice. You ended up going to LA doing the mm -hmm. single and, mm -hmm. and starting Shimshia. Mm -hmm. And, and how has that been? Honestly, I've just loved it. It's been, and just to be clear, I was in bands before in LA before I decided to do the solo thing. Um, oh, but, okay. Okay. But it, it once I decided to try the solo thing, cause I, I literally was like, let me just see one song. Let me try one song and see how it goes. And I had really great support. I have my producer who is like a co-writer and just so supportive. My um, vocal teacher, all these people that makes it feel like I'm not just hanging out here by myself, like flying in the wind, trying to make it happen. I've got, I've got support and that support just enabled me to get better and realize what was working, what wasn't working create Shimshia, which yeah. is really fun because it's like, okay, well, what do I want this to look like? No yeah. one's going to tell me what to do. That was liberating. Let me tell you. <laughs> That's beautiful. And I totally understand. 
as a podcaster that is doing the outreach and creating the podcast, doing the editing, producing, et cetera, it, it, part of it is very overwhelming because you're mm-hmm. like, oh, I've got so much going on. And you as the singer, songwriter, and uh, multi-instrumentalist creating all these things, you, it's a lot of work, but it's so worth it in the end when you actually commit to it and you do it because it can really result in a beautiful thing. So that, that is really the control. cool. How much fun is it to be totally in control of everything? Oh my God. It is amazing. I love it. That's like, yeah. that's like my drug. I love control. Just getting <laughs> hits of control. Yes, exactly. <laughs> but I did want to say too, I listened to a lot of your songs on Anywhere But Here. And I think my favorite song is Spaces. But yes, I listened, to, I loved, uh, I actually wrote down my favorites somewhere. Pretend. Oh. Anywhere but here, spaces and when you breathe. Those Amazing. were all Thank you. great songs. And I love, so I haven't been to a club in a long time, but mm-hmm. I can imagine myself dancing to those tunes, jams. Uh-huh. I'm, I'm old, so I don't know the proper term for the, the songs. But I also, I was listening to them while I was at work and I was able to focus while jamming out to it, which is difficult yes. for me. Uh-huh. And I was also, I was listening after I got out of the shower and I was drying my hair and everything and I was jamming to that. So I could like, it's a very, a very dynamic type of music where it's like, it's the beats are really good to focus. They're also good if you're just listening to it and you're able to dance to it and pay attention to it. So, and your voice, I do have to say is pretty stellar. I'm, I don't, I don't want to say I was expecting a bad voice, but when I heard the song, I was just blown away. And I remember you in an interview where you were thanking one of your vocal coaches that just changed your voice, you said, and yeah. I don't know what it was before, but it's phenomenal now. So. Well, it was not this, let me tell you. Thank you. <laughs> I, those comments mean a lot to me. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Cause I always want to know how listeners react to it, how they listen to it, what it feels like, what resonates with them. And yeah. I also like try to do work to a lot of that kind of music. So it's cool that it works for you too. It doesn't quite work the same for me. Hearing my you know, you know what? <laughs> that, that's what I liked about it though. It's so difficult for me to be able to focus on my work while, unless I'm doing like a spreadsheet or just numbers sure. or something, yeah. it's a little easier. But if I'm trying to write emails or something, I'm sometimes I'll accidentally write words from the song and then it'll be all messed up. So that, that causes a little and chaos. And they're but like, with- wait, what are you listening to? <laughs> yeah, exactly. As you write like some dirty words or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't give a fuck. I don't give a fuck. And I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. Uh, but anyway, that's another email for another time. I, I really did enjoy the songs though. I am, so here's another thing. I am horrible with lyrics. So I don't re- ever remember lyrics to any famous songs. And I was going to look up the lyrics, but I didn't. But I am interested because I'm the guy that like looks up the lyrics and then finds meaning in it afterwards. And I'm like, oh, this song was that. And sometimes mm. it's the case where I'm like, oh, my God, this song is just about selling drugs and, uh, and going to jail. So I, I don't know why I'm singing that so happily. But sure. I want to. I wanted to ask about your songwriting and, and with these songs, did you have any overall message with the album? Did you have just separate inspirations that you just planted into each song or how was your songwriting process in the, um, you know, the creation of this album? Yeah, each of the songs were written separately, um, but they all had the same theme. I, they were written right around the same time. And so it was like, I got to get out is the theme I think of almost all of those songs in some way. Anywhere but here is I got to get the fuck out. Uh, Whereas like when you breathe is, oh, you're so sweet, but I got to go. You know, like it's, it's just gradations of that in between too. Um, There's always a hint of anger underneath, which is really funny if you, once you get to know me, because I'm like happy all the time and everyone's like, you get angry. I'm like, I just shove it down. So it comes out (laughs) of my music. (laughs) But it's a beautiful thing what you can do with anger where I, um, and by the way, is there a song called this isn't working? Cause I hope there is. There might be in the world. You mean this isn't working? Oh no. I was thinking of a Shimshia song. Oh no, no, there's no song called this isn't working. Not yet. Okay. Not yet. (laughs) 
I'll give you partial time. writing credit for that one. <laughs> Just over and over again, this isn't working. This isn't working, yes. Can I be in the background? But no, you're losing out on a big idea. <laughs> oh, we'll workshop that line. That could be sung exactly. a little differently. And it's just like uh, fades off in the background. <laughs> yeah. You'll regret this. <laughs> oh, man. That's amazing. Uh, so I was going to ask one more question, but I, get dis- I got distracted by our own. Uh, I-, I was mid-question and I distracted myself. Mm. Well, you asked me about lyrics or anger. anger and, oh, and, yes. Yeah. Thank you. You must have a good memory, too, learning music and math and memory it's all brilliant intertwined that's yeah so i was going to ask about or i was going to say about anger Uh i think it's a beautiful thing that people can transform in creative ways where i just had a guest on here he was a comedian and he has a lot of really good relatable material about boyfriend girlfriend wife husband etc and children And he was saying, basically, he uses his emotions as fuel for the jokes. He's like, if I don't have an emotion there, I don't write the joke. There's not a lot of funny in it. And so it's really cool that he he doesn't come across as an angry guy necessarily. Um, But in his in his comedy, he's able to transform it where it's actually a funny thing. And it's also a thing that I'm like, oh. I fight with my wife about taking out the trash and replacing the trash bags all the time. So it's not just me, but to your music too, it's really cool that there's that, there's that foundation or underlayment of anger that's able to fuel and, and have these kind of, uh, I just had my roof replaced. That's why I'm using that (laughs) vocabulary. (laughs) I didn't know what it meant, but luckily I I could see you on the video making the (laughs) the, the gesture. For all of you, ah, oh shit, I think there's like 17 different words that I should have learned when trying to replace my roof. And by mm-hmm. replace my roof, I did not do it myself. I yeah. made gentlemen that are skilled in the area. But anyway, I, I feel like it's really cool what you're doing with anger. And it, you're able to push it down into other areas and not just be an angry person. So... Well, I, we all experience anger, as I, I've learned at some point in my life, and it's what connects us, right? Those are the, the emotions. So I love your story about your, the comedian. I'm going to have to find that podcast, that episode, yeah. because like, it, it's so, that is, that is what connects us. We, we all experience these universal emotions, and whether it's the trash or, I don't know, the toilet seat or whatever it is that's funny, yes, it doesn't matter. One. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you're absolutely right. And it, that episode is launching tomorrow. So oh, keep great. your eyes out. Listeners, keep your eyes out, although this will be in the future. So yes. I get really October confused with 14th? multidimensional. Yes, October 14th. Thank you. You're I welcome. was going to go back and forth in time. It was going to be like an Avengers movie. So I'm glad that you just put the date out there. No but anger, no, anger is good. And we all feel anger. Anger connects us. And... That's it. Uh, this is what I was going to say too. I don't know why I'm getting so forgetful now. It may be, maybe just me getting old. I am 32 and a half. So I think wow, that half really ancient. carries its weight. Totally. I, yes. I'm getting classic as my, as I say, but the uh, back to the anger and back uh-huh. to the, the connectivity. Uh-huh. I was going to say with the anger and connectivity while you gather your, if you, thank you. Um, that it's the pain comes from pushing it down too. The more we actually express it, the more it we let it out, and it doesn't hurt so bad. Uh, yeah, that's the other thing that I ha- I'm like learning. It's that's in beautiful. Process. Uh, and one of the things that I'm learning is to really feel it and not press it down, like you're saying, because I learning from this comedian guest Steve Trevino and then you and your music. And me, where I am hiding this anger, where, or pushing it down, where I'll get in a fight with my wife. We resolve it. What do I want to do? Just bury that body and keep going forward and not talk about it. And understanding that there is material that can be creatively constructed or created from that, or a creative force through maybe music. Maybe I can dust off my old guitar and just play a tune about the fucking toilet seat or something. (laughs) there can be a way that I can connect with the world through my anger. So yeah, that's good. You can write, this isn't working for you. 
for me. <laughs> this isn't working for me. I don't know why I'm trying to sing in front of you too. This Do is it, not going well. Honestly, if I sing in front of you right now, like I'm, there's allergies, like there's all this stuff in the air, like ugh, it wouldn't be good anyway. So I'm uh, not judging. By the way, I was going to ask one more thing. Then we can yeah. dive into the self-help. Your voice, your speaking voice, it's, all, it's also a very nice, mellifluous speaking voice. Did your speaking, voice. did your, yeah, I, I read it in the dictionary about, it's one of the words that I can actually remember, one of the things. Okay. But I was going to ask for your speaking voice, did it change with the vo vocal coach as well? Did you notice? Yeah, it has. And I keep trying to make it change even more because I grew up in Buffalo, New York. I don't, I don't know if you've ever met people from Buffalo or from that area, but we yeah. like to talk up like in, I can't, I don't know if I can quite do it, but like, we're going to go to the mall and get the, go to the car. Like it's all this like really hot and kind of like in our nose. And it's not when I drank or go back home, it all gets all up here. And that's just not, I mean, I, I like, I like it being a little bit more less in my nose. I guess. So that it did change. Sense. This my singing teacher is incredible. I mean, she keeps coaches speakers and all that too, for that reason, because I learned from her that the more using her technique, the more connected people actually feel to you. It's so funny. Mm -hmm. Like if I, if I talk like way back here, it doesn't seem like I'm right with you the same way. If I talk to you up in front, like I, it sounds like I'm more with you. I don't know if I'm quite achieving it here. Um, in the moment, but I, I, I've seen the difference and it's really been amazing. Oh my gosh. That is really cool. How long have you been working with your vocal coach? Uh, I guess it's been about two and a half years. Her name is wow. Terry Dans. Who's looking. She teaches online and she's honestly phenomenal. I've had lots of vocal coaches, lots of music teachers, and she is unreal. That's super cool. By the way, can you hear from my voice if I'm speaking from my nose? Because I do get self-conscious about that, where I like my, I like the tenor of my voice. Sure, yeah, it's nice voice. and deep, yeah. But, but I don't, I, sometimes I feel like I'm getting a little too nasally and that bugs me. So I try and push it down a little bit and it gets to a weird spot. So some pot, if you listen, to some episodes, it might be a little deeper or some ads in between the uh -huh. episodes, like stuff in here with ads from toilet plumbers or underlayment company. So <laughs> it gets a little deeper and I, I, I don't know. I just feel like I'm all over the place and it's still kind of evolving and I'm, I'm trying to find it. I'm on a quest. It for a sounds deeper. really natural. And I didn't notice any nasal quality personally, I, but I'm also not an expert at all. Okay. I just, I'm learning, but it's, I, I think it sounds great. It's very like robust and resonant. Thank you. I was fishing for the compliment. So I'm glad that I got one. A nice, Deliver. Nice I got you. <laughs> uh, I'm also, I feel I was blessed with living in Arizona, not the living in Arizona part, but the neutral accent that comes with it. Mm -hmm. I did spend about eight years in New Jersey and I worked in New York. I did actually travel through Buffalo to go visit my cousin in Toronto one time. Mm -hmm. Be beautiful place, but uh, lots of snow. But I got my, when I came back here in Arizona, my family said I have a little tinge of Jersey. A little as long as you don't say roof or draw instead of drawer. <laughs> I, I don't. My friends in New Jersey would make fun of me though for how I said water because oh. they say water. Yeah, I, I've had that experience. I used to live in New York City. So yeah, knew lots of people from New Jersey. <laughs> and water was a frequent to topic of conversation. People, I had no idea. It was one of the things I had no idea of. And people were like, oh, I'm sorry. Do you want some water? And then I felt very self-conscious about it. So sometimes I, I would try they're the it. ones that need to feel self-conscious personally. Apologies to all you New Jersey residents. <laughs> it's okay like 78 percent of the audience is from jersey but you guys need to know Wait. okay why you're wrong we're right <laughs> that's basically like the jersey motto so i think we're just embodying that with our if i like us enough for that i think so too that's beautiful all right lauren is there before we get into the self-help is there anything else that you've got that you want to plug anything else that you want to say any proclamations to the world well, I'm not sure exactly when this is going to hit, hit the airwaves. Theaters? 
This yes. will hit. This will be in Harkins <laughs> and AMC. No, it'll, well, tell me your dates and then I can work around you. Oh my God, you're amazing. I, on Saturday, I filmed the music video. It's going to be incredible. I am promised that it will be out in about right before Halloween. Um, so, and it's going to be really fun because it's horror themed. And oh I have an incredible team working on it here in LA. Like, that's the thing that's so cool about LA, just like meeting these amazing people. Like, I swear to God, the director, he is going to be like legit famous Oscar winning director someday. I am 100% convinced. Like, his work is so good. So, I'm very excited to see what this looks like. That is so exciting. And side note, I, when I saw your Voyage LA interview, I saw the picture and picture credits mm -hmm. and Juliet Fru. Yeah. I went to high school with her. You're joking. <laughs> no, I'm serious. You're not, Jules is like all my photos because she's amazing. I love her. Oh Jules and I God. are like friends. That's amazing. No way. She yes. may not even remember me. But if you see her next and you remember, say, Stefan Sitani says hello. I will. I think she's in Arizona right now. Are you in oh, Arizona is she? Now? Yeah. I am. I am. Yeah, she's in Arizona, so. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. I was thinking of, I, we are Facebook friends, her and I, but I haven't spoken to her since 2006. So, uh, you know what? Maybe I will. Just say, like, hey, I saw your great photography. So. She's very, very, very talented. Jules is amazing. Jules no, you're, is all the photos that I saw of yours are incredible. So if those were her, then. Yeah, she's no, very, she's got a beautiful good. eye. She's really great. That's it's awesome. such a small world. So I funny. know. I know. That's hilarious. Uh, okay, awesome. So the, I'm so sorry. The date for the, the release of the music video is two weeks, like Halloween-ish? Halloween-ish, yeah. Okay. You know what? I'll get this done a little bit before Halloween, and then I will ask you if you have the date, and if you do, or have a link or something, I'll put it in. And listeners, you can just click right in the show notes. Click, click, click. Oh, you're it. so generous. Thank you. That means a lot. Yeah. Thank you're you. You're very welcome. Very welcome. All right. Let's get into the self-help. And before we tackle these questions, I mm -hmm. like us to be centered and inspired by reflecting on some quotes. So okay. I've got a quote that I have, but mm -hmm. I, before I get into mine, I like to ask my guests if they have any inspirational quotes that help lift them up in their dark days. That's a really good question. I think one of the ones that always comes to me is Ralph Waldo, Waldo Emerson. Um, oh. And it's something in Latin, but it means don't look for yourself outside of yourself. And I just think that's so beautiful. I think it's something we all need to hear that we, we have everything we need right, right here. That really is nice, especially for being asked if you had a quote on hand with no preparation whatsoever. I'm not going to lie. It was in my high school yearbook. That was my quote in my high school yearbook. So it's not like I just like you know, came up with that one, but. Nice. Yeah. Well, hey, props anyway. And that is a really nice quote because there have been times that I have found myself comparing myself or my podcast or whatever to other people or thinking, should I change this? Should I change that? And I think, or should I change this about myself? Mm -hmm. and should I have a nasally voice or not? Yeah, yeah. Should I be a little more nasally or should? No, you know, so it's like, what do I feel like is best for me? And uh, should I say water or water? And, you know, I feel like I'm a water guy. So yes. that's where I've been. <laughs> I just Good. looked inside right. myself. Exactly. <laughs> so that's a beautiful quote. Thank you, Lauren. I have a quote here. And this is actually not by any person whatsoever. This is by a robot. And the robot's name is Inspirobot. And what its main purpose to do is probably not kill humankind, but it's actually taking the wisest words known to man and then just mashing them together for a beautiful, inspirational quote. Mm. Makes I sense love it. so far. I can't wait to hear it. All right. Okay. So this quote this week, Inspirobot says, swallow love, feed relationships. Uh, I read that a little nasally. I, I, I was trying to go robot to get the full effect of the quote, yeah, but it just sure. ended up nasally. So whatever. Robots That's kind of an nasally. impressive algorithm. Is that the same algorithm that created Childish Gambino? 
<laughs> you know, it may be. It may be Childish Gambino, powered by Inspirobot. Yes. You know, because he, I think he put his name into the Wu Tang generator. Did you know that? No. Way. That's how he got his name. Uh, Supposedly, I don't know if that's a, an old, if that's a true thing, but I remember reading that somewhere. Oh, okay. That actually makes a lot of sense. I thought when you said it, it was all of his songs were just generated by some robot oh, that made oh, lyrics. Yeah, not maybe, but <laughs> possibly, maybe possibly. Inspire Bots behind. But Childish Gambino is a brilliant artist name. I think. I think it's it fun. Is. And love, wait, swallow love, feed relationships is like pretty good. I mean, if you told me Rumi said that, I think I'd believe you. <laughs> it is true. I mean, sometimes Inspirebot doesn't quite hit the mark. It gets a little too mysterious or ominous. But this one, I feel like swallow love, it is difficult for us to metaphorically swallow love sometimes. Somebody might give me a compliment and I feel ashamed and I'll be like, no, I don't think so. Or I'll, I'll deflect and be like, well, your hair is beautiful, which by the way, I love your hair. It looks Thanks. awesome, Lauren. But I, if you swallow the compliment, it's, it's packed with nutrients that's going to be mm. able to boost you up for a really nice energetic vibe that's going to help you grow. And so if you swallow it, it's good. And then the feed relationships, I think that in the connection, maybe you could either baby bird it and then give your compliment <laughs> back to others. So then that does a really nice relationship building. My hands are all the over the gesture, place. The gesture of the baby bird was like, it was almost vomitous. It was like, bleh, bleh. here, and my love, that. Here, yes, here, baby birds. Take my compliment. <laughs> so it's it's a way that you can, you know, regurgitate your compliments to others and be able to help those relationships grow. So overall, solid quote by Inspirebot. Solid quote. It's also very similar to my quote, which was like looking inside to create. Like, isn't that kind of weird? It is weird. It's like Inspirebot's listening to us right now. Probably. This is... Very creepy. Okay. All right. Well, before we think too much about Inspirebot, yeah. I feel like we're inspired mostly yes. by your quote. So we're going to go on to the questions. We've got two. The first one, it's found by our fan, Justin. Thank you, Justin. It's from Reddit. It says, how do I ask someone if they have a boyfriend without being obvious? The person in question is my somewhat new friend that I sort of like. I'm pretty sure she doesn't have a BF, but she said something yesterday that confused me. So I think it's possible she might. How do I ask? Okay, Justin, I really want to know what she said. Because if she said, I've got to go out with my boyfriend, <laughs> that might give you a clue. <laughs> yeah, I don't know how the, I don't know what could have been confusing that she said. Maybe um, she just said we. Sometimes people use we, and then all of a sudden you're like, wait, who's we? Oh, oh, yeah, 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 that's true. That's true. Maybe she used a boy's name. She's mm. like, me and Justin made out yesterday. And, she, <laughs> and so he's like, hmm, boyfriend, maybe not boyfriend. Yeah. So I don't know. But I think maybe the safe thing to do would be, I think I may have pulled this trick out of my hat in my single days, is just assume she has a boyfriend in your mm -hmm. speech. So be like, oh, I'm going to go out for coffee. Would you and your boyfriend like to come? And if she's like, I don't have a boyfriend, then you know. And if she says, I do have a boyfriend, you know, and you have to go to coffee with her and her boyfriend. Yeah, that sounds so, terrible. That might be, yeah, okay. Maybe like a-, a Well, but then you can be like, oh, we're busy. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> or, oh, I'll bring my girlfriend. Perfect. Perfect. Then you have to find a girlfriend. Yeah. So or someone that, to cover for you. Exactly. But I, th I feel like that's how a lot of rom-coms start out where it's like, oh, I've got to find a girlfriend and then, or a boyfriend, you find one, it's a friend, you guys find out you really have feelings for each other and then romance blossoms. So exactly. I don't think I, there's any, go ahead. I like your, I like your advice. I, I really do think just assuming that she's, of course, some guy has has got her tied up because I don't, I can't believe I said it like that, but you know what I mean? Like has got her on lock. I don't know. Like who owns her? There's some guy out there who must own her because she's so good. I don't know how to say it in a way there's, that doesn't yes, sound. Yes, there, there's, 
a guy that has claimed her? No, that also Ooh, doesn't sound no, good. No, no. Nope, 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 nope. Who there is you? a guy who has engaged, yes, who loves her or is, is engaged in relationship with her. Someone, there's a guy who has swallowed her love. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I think that's what Justin should do. Justin should just, should just ask this woman. So, um, Kate, uh, has, have you swallowed someone's love lately? <laughs> oh, God. Oh, I love I didn't it. Even, I, th- I didn't even think about that in Spirobot. Jesus. <laughs> Beautiful way to find out. God, <laughs> yes, Spirebot. Yeah, Spirebot. Feed relationships. That is a wow. <laughs> like adult, adult bot is what it should be called. Jesus. Yeah. Well, good, good suggestions though. I feel like we're on the right track here. So, Justin or Question Asker, I feel like you've got a load of. Wait a second. Halt. Screech. Er, Lauren. Yeah. You have probably had this happen to you a million times. How have guys asked you if you have a boyfriend or not? I might be really silly, but I can't think. I, I don't, I can't think of a time when someone's asked me that, to be honest mm. with you. If anything, no. I always feel like I'm in the awkward position of having to tell people, uh, I have a boyfriend. Like, which just like, I, I just hate, I'm... I really hate confrontation. I hate rejection. I hate feeling like I'm rejecting the other person. So I hate having to say that. That's the only reason. Not like I don't like my boyfriend, you know. Sometimes that's that's totally fair. That that is. So I was going to ask Lauren. So what does your boyfriend think of your music? See, that is a beautiful way because I didn't admit that I had a boyfriend. So that's how I, you that's how you ask it. What does your boyfriend think of that? That that, that way you don't get stuck going to coffee. Yes. Yes. Exactly. Yes. Yeah, you avoid yeah. the awkward coffee. Exactly. Perfect. Perfect. Exactly. You still didn't answer the question, so he I'm not it. sure. Of course he oh, loves okay. it. Yeah. Okay, perfect. Great. How does he not love it? He's like, sing to me, baby. Like, he's all in. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. Okay, yeah. perfect. We're going to move on to the uh-huh. next question. This is from our fan, Megan. It says, help with campers playing loud music? We've been at this spot for about 24 hours now, camping in a tent. The spot next to us, about 100 yards away, have been playing their music so loud that we can clearly hear it, even over high winds. They have a fifth wheel with extension with external speakers. I've called the folks at the state park who said they'd send someone over, but that was over three hours ago and it still blasts. It's really causing anxiety for myself and my dog. What can I say to them if I go over to see if they will turn it down? Okay, Hmm. I have the best bad people advice ever. Oh, please, please. Just smear some like raw meat or something outside their camper so they leave. (laughs) Like, you just gotta... Do something really terrible. That's if you're a bad person, just so we're clear. I had, no, this is beautiful advice. I was going to say something similar, but the raw meat, is that for the foul stench or is that visible to show that there is a monster out there, possibly a bear, and it's just eating things and raw meat was just some debris that sprayed out of its mouth? I've been hanging out with too many Scorpios because I was thinking that it would attract a bear, which would then make them leave. And then I was realizing a hundred yards isn't really that far if you've already attracted a bear. So that's not a great, totally great thought through plan. You might want to reconsider this with some (laughs) other evil friends. But yeah, that was my, my thought was to attract a bear, but maybe it's better just the threat of bear. Oh, okay. Okay. I think, but I think it could be, oh yeah, 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 yeah. Well, make sure. I think this would be really cool, actually. If you put the raw meat, you snuck to their camper, you put the raw meat through the speaker holes, and then the <laughs> bear will be attracted to the stereo. It'll pick it Take up. the stereo. <laughs> walk away. Boombox, John Cusack style. Yes, yes, oh my exactly. God. The bear. I love you. It'll just be, it'll, it'll be, mute. it'll be magical. That's what it'll be. That so. is such a great idea. <laughs> so much fun. So imagine if we got to see the bear with the boom box. I almost want to do that now. I almost want to buy a speaker, put raw meat in it, and then see a bear run off. No, not run off. Waltz off well. with a little swagger in its step, blaring 
we could have Shimshia playing. Perfect. I'm in. Bases? I love. Okay. Yeah. Okay. We're good. All right. We're this good. Is beautiful. Awesome. Any other last tidbits of advice for this person before we go on to the end? Last tidbits of advice. I also think what, I mean, the, the really good people advice is to like, you know, just talk to them and say how it makes you feel like nonviolent communication style. When you play your loud music, it gives me a lot of anxiety because I'm here relaxing and loud music makes me stressed. That's a good, I like that. We had this, we had the devil angel, the, uh -huh. the devil, very, the shoulder devil is what I was yeah. going to say. Very prominent. The shoulder angel was a little quiet. So I'm glad you made him pipe up. Yeah. And that is some good advice. And I mean, they are in the woods, in the middle of nowhere, camping. I mean, you, one of the main, main goals of camping is to get in touch with nature. Unless you're mm -hmm. glamping, then yeah. it's to get in touch with nature and material possessions. But if you're camping, I feel you should have your speakers to a decibel that's not going to give a bear a headache. So I think that if you're, if you're causing stress for humans that are used to that type of noise, then it's really not a good camping experience for all of nature. So oh. I would say appeal to their better nature. Like that's yourself. nice. That's yeah. so nice. Yeah. yeah. Say, and say, please say, please yes. and see what they say. And then if that, that's, that's appeasing shoulder angel, if that doesn't work, then go to the raw meat and jam it in those little tiny speaker holes and let the bear walk away with their, their speaker. Time to go ham. Like just do Time. it. Time to go. Yes. Beautiful. Yeah. All right. Well, beautiful advice. This is great. We have arrived at the end of our podcast. So before we say goodbye, Lauren, I just wanted to say a huge Thank you for joining me on this roller coaster of laughter, love, and advice. I love this. This is so much fun. I want to do this again. I'm going to invite myself back on. Please. You are welcome anytime. The metaphorical door is open. The music won't be too loud in the woods. <laughs> so Thank it'll you. Be, it'll Thank be good. you. But seriously, anytime you've got something to plug, or if you just want to come over and say hi, you're welcome to be back on the show. But... Until then, I wanted to say again, because our listeners, I think it's like seven times you need to hear something to be able to retain mm -hmm. it. What have you got going on? Where can people follow you? Follow you? What have you got to plug? Let her rip. My name is Shimshia. I am on all the streaming platforms, Spotify, Apple Music, Amazon. I've got a new EP out called Anywhere But Here. And I have a new video that is coming out very soon. You can click a link and see it. And it's going to be so good. Yes. Oh, so good. Beautiful. And guess what? All of that's going to be in the show notes. So if you listeners are like, oh, I can't keep track. Of it. It's all, it's, first off, you should be able to keep track. She was very clear, but it's all going to be there. So you can just click. It's a click away from your mobile device or wherever. And then you can go on over, follow her, support her, give her some love. And uh, the music really is fantastic. I am a follower on Spotify now yes. and on YouTube. So sweet. I, yeah. So thank you so much. There. But I can see this music going like huge. Oh, huge. Thank you. Thank so you. I'm, very, I'm very excited for you, Lauren. But other than that, I think it's time to say goodbye. Adios. So, adieu, farewell of Peter saying, is that a song? Yes. That is. Gone with. No. Sound, no, of, sound, the hills. sound of music. Sound of music. <laughs> sound of music. It's beautiful. Thanks, well. Steve. Thank you, Lauren. We will talk sometime soon. Love that. Thank you so much. This is really fun. Awesome. Likewise. I have swallowed your love. I, I didn't want to say uh, it. Oh, it's, I'm going to edit it out. Yeah. It's, it's, no, 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 no. I'm so sorry. That came, uh, uh, bleh. it's out. It's out. It was okay. funny. That was really funny. I really love it. I appreciated it. Oh, God. Uh, well, I'm going to end the recording there. <laughs> but...